Hello and thank you for watching this first exercise uh, performing a hypothesis test for two population variances. Now you're going to see a lot of similarities again. The process of hypothesis testing doesn't really change no matter what it is we're testing. What's going to be different here is the nature of the distribution that we're using. When we're working with two sample variances, the distribution that we're going to be using is the F distribution. The F distribution is simply the ratio of two chi-squared variables. And in this case, our two chi-squared variables are our two sample variances. So in respect to the test statistic, the F statistic is probably the easiest test statistic that you'll calculate. It's just the ratio of these two numbers, nothing much to it. The challenge here is that each of these two chi-squared variables has its own degrees of freedom dependent on sample size. We have denominator, uh, sorry, numerator degrees of freedom, and we have denominator degrees of freedom. And so this will be n1 minus 1 numerator degrees of freedom, n2 minus 1 denominator degrees of freedom. As a result of these two degrees of freedoms, it gives rise to a significant number of variations on this distribution. So let me just give you a quick look. Here's our F tables. We have numerator degrees of freedom across the top. We have denominator degrees of freedom down the bottom, or down, sorry, down that first row. We have for each variant of the distribution. So let's say I, I have a distribution with five degrees of freedom in the denominator, seven degrees of freedom in the numerator. So that's one variant. Now we can ignore pretty well everything in this table except for these four critical values, right, where these two come together, and these four corresponding probabilities. So now, coming from the Z distribution where there was just one variant and we had all kinds of detail, we had p-values, we had probabilities to four decimal places for every um, test statistic in that distribution to two decimal places. Now there's so many variants that for each variant we have only four critical values and four probabilities. And notice we only have these probabilities in the upper tail. So because of the limitations that arise from having so many variations of this distribution, when we formulate our test statistic, we will always formulate this test statistic such that the numerator sample variance is the larger of the two. Now, you'll remember, perhaps you'll remember having done module 10 exercises when we had two populations and we were testing their means or the difference in their means. In that scenario, it didn't matter uh, how we formulated the test. We could have formulated an upper tail test or a lower tail test, depending on how we defined our populations. So in that case, we had the freedom to define this as population one and this as population two. And then based on that definitions, that determined whether or not we were doing an upper tail test or a lower tail test. When we're looking at the F distribution, anytime we're doing a one tail test, because of the limitations of the F tables, we will always formulate it with the larger sample variance in the numerator which means we will therefore always be formulating it as an upper tail test. Now this also applies to two tail tests as well. All we're eliminating is the possibility of obtaining a test statistic that will fall in the lower tail of that distribution. Okay, so we'll always formulate our test statistic with the larger sample variance in the numerator this ensures that we will always have a test statistic that lies in the upper half of our distribution so that when we use these massive tables, lots of information, most of which is irrelevant for any given problem, we will always have a value that is closer to the upper tail than the lower tail and we'll find uh, critical values that are helpful. Okay, so all of that said, let's get into our problem here. Let's clean this up because we don't need any of this stuff here anymore. 
So come into our exercise. So now we're looking at writing uh, in-class exams. The difficulty is making sure that they can be completed within the allotted time. Even though the average completion time might be within requirements, the variance can be a problem. Some students will finish in a few minutes. Others might completely run out of time. So in an attempt to reduce the variance of completion times, a new computerized method of testing has been implemented. In order to determine if the new method is successful at reducing the variance, we take here we have two samples. I have one sample of 30 students who are writing the exam using the old method. I have 35 students who are using the new method. The standard deviation for the old method is 9.2 minutes. The standard deviation of the new method, 6.7 minutes. And we want to test to determine if the new method resulted in a lower variance than the uh, old method. Okay, so what we need to do first, we have to keep this in mind, that we have to always formulate this with the larger sample variance in the numerator. So this means that my old method is going to be population one. So sigma, if I formulate my test statistic, this is going to be 9.2 over 6.7. Now we haven't even formulated our test yet because here I've got this set up such that the, the first population, the one that's in my numerator, that is my old method. And the second population is my new method. And what I want to determine is that the new method is lower, has a lower variance than the old method. So when we formulate our test, here I'll fit this in over here, my null and my alternative, I want to set this up. It has to be an upper tail test. So even though I might be inclined to set this up as a lower tail test to say I want to see that the new variance or the variance of the new method is less than the variance of the old method, we have to set this up as an upper tail test. Let me move this a little bit. So what that means is, in my alternative, this is going to be sigma squared 1, the old method, is greater than sigma squared 2. This is based on these definitions. If I have evidence to show that the old method, the variance is larger than the variance of the new method, that's the same as saying that the variance of the new method is less than the variance of the old. So after all of that, here we have finally our hypothesis is set up. We are going to do this, let's see, it doesn't say, so we'll do this at the alpha 05 level of significance. And now we've already got our test statistic. We kind of work at this a little bit backwards. Let me just write this as old and this is new because we started off with the test statistic only because we needed to use that as a guide to help us define our populations. So it's the, the similar process, but it's mixed up a little bit. Now we're going to calculate the value of our test statistic. So we'll find a calculator, 9.2. Uh, oh, these are standard deviations. I just noticed these are standard deviations, so these have to be squared because this is the ratio of two chi-squared variables. So I'll have 9.2 squared divided by 6.7 squared. That gives me a value of 1.88. Let's say 1.89. 1.89 as my F statistic. And here we're working with an F distribution. So my F distribution, I have the old is in the numerator and I have 30 students writing old exams. So that's 29 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 34 degrees of freedom in the denominator. This is a one tail test. So this is alpha is 0.05. So let's find the critical value for this exercise first, and then we'll go and we'll perform, uh, get the p-value for this test. So I'll go to my F distribution. I have 29 and 34. So 29 degrees of freedom in the numerator. The closest I have is 30. And 
34 degrees of freedom in the denominator. So we have to come down here a ways. Scroll down. 34, the closest I have is that is 30. So there's 30 and 35 degree, degrees of freedom in the numerator. So then where those two come together, here we have our four critical values. And back here, we have their corresponding probabilities. Now we're gonna perform this test at the 05 level of significance. So here's 05, so that's the second value. Oops. So if I follow that back to my four critical values here, that means my critical value is 1.813. So I come back to my problem, critical value 1.813. Here's this distribution, looks something like this. I have a critical value here, 1.813. We'll reject if it's larger than this. We will not reject if it's smaller. Do not reject. Here we have our test statistic is 189. So that's somewhere out here in that rejection space. So I will reject my null hypothesis and say that I do have evidence to show that the old method has a larger variance than the new method, which is the same as saying that the new method has resulted in a lower variance of completion time. Okay, let's go ahead and find our p-value. Again, we're only going to find an approximate p-value or a range of p-values. We go back to our f-tables. Remember our f-statistic here is, is 1.89. So if I look at our at our values within just those four blocks 1.89 is somewhere just in here hopefully you can see that okay these numbers are so small so i'm just between 1.813 and 2.037 so the relevant probabilities are right over here between 0.05 and 0.025 so that would be my p-value right between somewhere between 0.05 and 0.025 so my p-value is less than 0.05 greater than 0.025 and again that's consistent with our conclusion using the critical value approach it's smaller than our level of significance so again we can comfortably reject the null hypotheses we do have evidence to show that the new method has resulted in a lower variance okay i hope that all made sense we'll do a couple of other exercises uh, it's a little bit different from the other tests that we've done but still fundamentally the same it's using those f tables uh, that can really be the the challenge i think in this part so let's uh let's finish up here and we'll do another exercise okay thanks for watching